Hi, I'm doing a video for Affinity for Windows and the Epson F570. So we're going to start from the beginning and we're going to go to File and then New. And under here are all your presets of your papers or what we call an artboard, which you're going to create on. And there's the various ones. There's Letter, there's Legal, Ledger, all these different ones. So, I am just going to start with Letter. So I'm going to click Letter. And then you see on the right uh, is your paper width, 300 dpi. And you can choose the format, uh, prefer embedded. Uh, the color is always going to be RGB forward slash 8, sRGB IEC 61966-2.1 is your color profile you're creating with, not printing with. You'll be printing with Epson Profile. And I like to do transparent. If you want to do a white background, that's your choice. So we're going to do, I'm going to do transparent. I don't do anything with the margins or the bleed. And now we're going to create our workspace. And here it is. Now if you've made a mistake and you want it going portrait, just go to document setup and Go to portrait. That's all you have to do, and you'll see it'll flip over. I'm going to put it back, document setup, and unclick this. Okay, next we're going to go and we're going to get a graphic. So, what you're going to do is go to file and place, not export, not new, or open. It's going to be place. You're going to place your graphic on this artboard. So we're going to click that. And let's see. Let me pick something I haven't used. Oh, this is good. All right. Once you get it, you're going to see this arrow. And you're going to press your left mouse button down. And then size it. Okay, now we're at an eight and a half by eleven size paper. Um, people always say to me, well I, I need to um, get it sized for a tumbler like 9.23 by 8.7. What you want to do is you're sizing your image not the paper. So while you have this highlighted, you're going to look down here and change your image size. So let's say 9.23 by 8.75. And then hit enter. That's the size of your, of course I went too far. <laughs> Let me change this. 8.75. There we go. Well, that doesn't work either. Let's just do 8. 8.00. All right. There you go. So here's where you can make your changes. Don't worry about this. Just stay here under Transform. And this is where you're going to size everything. You can also go this way or type it in. And you see where my thing is. It also... You see the width and the height on the top left, right where the arrow is. So again, if you're wanting to do four by six, you just go six. And there we go. Not going to look good, but that's how you change sizes. A lot of people ask me how they do that. Okay. Make this big. I have a 
already printed this, so it was for a t-shirt. Not for me, of course. <laughs> All right, so that's that. Now we're going to go through um, your setup. And these are very important. Um, your Epson uses profiles. And there's two profiles, textile and rigid. 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 I do not use, I only use textile because I found that that's the only profile that works and looks great with colors. Regardless if you're using tumblers or soft substrates or hard substrates, my suggestion is to always use the textile. So we're going to go to File, Print, and we're going to pick our printer. By the way, make sure you only have one S500. Some people install it so many times they have three, and the drivers are going to different printers. So that's another thing. A document, fit to printable, 100%, all sheets and automatic. Now we're going to go to the printer uh, settings. So we're going to go to properties, and here is a big printer. What you want to make sure is your document setting is the same size like if you chose a 4x6 or a 9x12 or uh, like a tumbler setting, what you want to do is go to change paper size and go to user defined just in case or whatever you picked. But they have to match. They have to match your paper settings and your affinity settings. So let's just go back a second. So I'm going to make this a weird size. So we're going to make it 7 by 6. So I can show you what I'm talking about. Okay, that's a user-defined size. So when we go to print, We're going to go here, document size is user defined, oh I went to the wrong printer, I'm sorry, sorry about that, that looked a little odd to me. <laughs> okay, properties is a 7 by 5 so I'm going to go to user defined, hit OK. Custom paper size. I've already set them up here. And go by five. Okay. And you can also add that as a user defined as I have done. And you hit OK. So now that should be the same. User defined custom paper size. I'm using the roll. I use the roll for everything. I only use Epson paper. I've done uh, many things with other paper and just the Epson paper seems to work with the profiles best and that's what I'm sticking to. Media type here are your two Epson profiles. One is the textile and one's the rigid. I only use Text type. Next is your print quality. Since you're using Affinity, you are going to put no color adjustments. So it's going to be off because you're going to let Affinity handle the color. Next, you have a choice of speed, quality, maximum quality, and quality options. Quality options is your quality. I've got it on the highest. So I actually pick maximum, which is the highest. Do not use high speed. You'll get marks all over your paper. Take it off high speed. Use finest detail. 
And by the way, if you don't have these two, these are the um, profiles, you didn't install the Epson drivers. So you want to make sure you have these two. I, I do a print preview. You don't have to. Um, it's up to you. I like to see my mistakes. Next, we're going to go to Advanced. I don't do anything with this. Normal Cut. Auto Rotate. Save Paper Roll. That means um, if you set it to 5x7, it won't use the whole roll to print a 5x7. It'll, chop, it'll cut it right where the 5x7 is. I don't do anything with these. Uh, some people do. I don't. They kick up the black or they kick up the color. I don't. I do it in Affinity, which I'll show you. Hit OK. We're back to everything here. Custom settings I do nothing with. Layout I do nothing with. Again, this was printer settings. Now we're going to hit OK and go back. So we've done this. And as you see, it's now 5 by 7 on an 8 and a half by 11. But I am going to, again, change it the other way. Um, let's see, properties. And I want a portrait. Okay. And I hit OK. And you see it's this way. So you have an 8 and a half by 11 printing a 5 by 7 size. Uh, graphic. Alright, that's layout. We do not do anything for rasterization. It should always be on 300 dpi. Bleed marks, again, I do nothing. This is the important part, the color management. You have two options. Perform by the printer, which you don't want, because you're going to let Affinity choose the color, so it's going to be by the app. Your printer profile is going to be the textile. Remember, it has to match Affinity's printer profile and the Epson uh, printer settings. Those have to match. Next is the relative, uh, the rendering intent. I always use relative color metric unless I'm doing a photo. I don't use perceptual. I don't use saturation. These are my choices, and that's best for me. Print to file, we do nothing. So once you hit all these in print, and you get all these right or set, you're going to hit OK, and it's going to print. I'm not going to print. I'm just going to hit Cancel, because I've already printed this. We're going to go back to some things that affinity can do. So let's say you want to make some changes to the color. So you're going to highlight this and you're going to do an adjustment layer. New adjustment layer. This is where everything is similar to Photoshop. Not quite, but we can change the exposure. So what I'm going to do is you see that you can make it brighter, darker. When you get to what you like, you hit Merge. Or if you make a mistake, just hit Reset. Now I'm going to hit Delete because I don't want to save it. So next, again, a new adjustment layer. And let's go to Vibrance. I'm going to go you have to highlight this. Then go to go to the adjustment layer. All right. Now you can see that it goes to almost black. The more this goes up, the more vibrant it becomes. And then the saturation, you can see that. Very, very saturated. I think that's neat. You can mess around with the blend mode. See that? Of course, I don't want to do that, but 
I'm not going to save it, but you can see you can really make it overly saturated. And then just hit merge. I'm going to hit delete. I don't want to save it. So again, these are all the layers, new adjustment layers that you can play with. Brightness, contrast. I mean, there's a, there's a lot you can do with it. Now, for people who really don't know Affinity and they say, but I've been using Silhouette for a thousand years. What am I going to do? I don't want to learn a new program. I still use Silhouette. And what you want to do is, let me delete this. Um, you can create in Silhouette. You can do whatever you want in Silhouette. The object is in Silhouette, let me bring something in. And I'll show you what to do. Oh, let's see. Open. Okay. What can we bring in? Um, let's just bring in this. All right. So you're going to, you've done something in silhouette. You've created a graphic maybe of your own and put words in and blah, blah, blah. So what you want to do is, if you've created in Silhouette, you want to go to File, and you want to go to Save to Hard Drive, and then you want to drop this down and make it a PNG. Okay, you want to do PNG, you can name it, then you hit OK, and the most important... Uh, let me change this. It's going to overwrite my good one. I don't want that. Okay. Then you can hit OK. And here is your exporting your PNG. You want to hike this up to at least 200. Okay. And then you want transparent background. What this does is save it as a PNG. So we're going to save this. I'm going to go back to Affinity, get rid of this. We're going to go to File, Place, and there it is. Okay, so you can still use Silhouette. The only thing you're going to use this for now is getting your true colors and to print. Now, if you want to add um, text, you're going to press the A and then start typing. Okay, now you're going to say it's very small. We're going to make it as big as we can. Okay, I'm going to hit this that's the move tool. All right. It's an ugly text, I know. We'll bring it down. Move this up. Okay, now you're going to say, well, I don't want that text. So what you're going to do is, once you hit text again, highlight it all. And then here is your text. So if you want to change your text, you see that? You go up here. This will be the drop down of all your fonts. That's a nice one. I didn't do the last one. Let me go back and do this because I did not get the T. Make sure everything is highlighted. So let's pick a nice font. Now right, let's do this one. All right, now let's say, well, I don't like this color. Also, here's the size. If you want to make it bigger, smaller, whoop, that looks good. If you don't like the color, you can use the color wheel. You can use the sliders. Um, that, and this is what will happen. You see? You can do text in here. You can change your colors. You can change your font by going back here once it's highlighted. Just keep clicking that. 
and it goes down. All right, you want to move your text. It's really no different. You'll use the move tool. It's really no different than silhouette. Move things around. Ah, uh, let me get this down. All right, one more thing. If you want to add another picture, you're going to go to place. Uh, let's pick another picture. Okay, let's try this. And you can make it as big as you want. So I've got this. Oh, and then you say, well, how do I get more than one thing on a page in duplicate? So you're going to highlight that, go to edit, and duplicate. Move it down. Edit, duplicate. Okay. Um, now let's say you want it to go behind here. So you're going to right click, arrange, and we have the same thing. Move to front, move to back, and it's going to go back so when you're filling pictures, let's say you have a picture that has an open space or a window, like a cup where you can put your dog, that's what you're going to fill in here. Okay, now for people who have, you're working on the F570, um, you can pick the size paper you want. Let me do a file new one. Let's pick a size of, now I know the width is 24 inches, and there's a 17 inch one, so I'm going to do a 24 by 18. Okay, and let's do it this way, and we're going to create, so you're going to have this Believe it or not, it's 24 by 18. It's going to be a long roll. So you want to put pictures on there. Let's see. You want to do several, because you're doing several tumblers or something. Now let's do this. Now this is good for flags, um, garden flags, because I just did one. So again, you can measure the flag here. I think the 12 by 18. So I know the height is 18 by 12. Okay. Maybe we should make the paper a little longer. Uh, let me change the paper size. So again, I'm going to go to Document Setup. Oh, let's see. Let's do... Okay. Okay, so now the paper is very big. <laughs> All right, so we're going to move this. And then because you have a double-sided flag, you're going to duplicate this one. Edit, duplicate. And you see it's 12 by 18. Or should it be 18 by 12? I think it's 18 by 12. Let me reverse it. I'm not even sure. Nope. It's 12 by 18. Okay. So the paper's too big. But that's how you would do it. I'm going to change the paper again. It looks way too big. I certainly don't want that. I want to unlock that. So we wanted the 24 inch. All 
flag. That looks a little better. So if you're doing a flag, that's what you're going to do. You could also add some more stuff here. I mean, you have a big printer. You want to be able to utilize it. And I'll show you how it's going to look on the printer. Uh, let's see. What did we say the size of the paper was? Okay, 30 by 40. All right, so we're going to file print and then we're gonna have to save this 30 by 40 so the width is 24 This is going to be user defined. Custom paper. Everything stays the same. So you'll see it here. 24 by 40. And that's how it's going to print. And I'm just going to show you when I go to print what it shows. Well, I don't want to print it, but this is how it's going to look. It's going to come down, and that's for a play. All right. I think that should do it. Um, if you don't have your printer profiles, I would go to the Epson site. Download the suite. It's the driver and the utilities. It's the very first one. Delete your current printer, the F570. Delete it and then go and install it all over again by using that that uh, driver and also when it asks you if, if your inks are primed you're going to say yes and do the setup all over again except for the ink and that should do it thank you.